Okay, in this video, we're gonna jump right in and start downloading and installing Python. So if you already have Python installed on your computer, and there's a chance you already do, if this is not your first Python thing, I'm still gonna recommend that you uninstall it and reinstall it, and I'll show you why in just a second. But to uninstall it on Windows, just go to your Windows Start menu, type in Control Panel, and this will pop up. Come down here to uninstall a program, click on it. Just scroll down here till you find Python, and double click it to un uninstall it, so pretty simple. So to install this thing, let's go to Google and I'm just gonna type in Python. And you can see the first thing here is python.org, so we'll go there. And this is the official Python website, so we wanna to go to downloads here. And here's the button for Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, you'll see the Mac or Linux button. But notice we're on version 3.7.4. Now, if this version number changes by the time you watch this course, no big deal, just download the latest one. As long as it's not like four and above, as long as it's below four, you'll be fine. Uh, major version updates are like the first number, so from three to four, from two to three. If it's somewhere in three, you're fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here to download, and we can save this anywhere. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. And I'm on Firefox, so my downloads appear up here on this little arrow. If you're on Chrome, they appear down here. Wherever it appears on your computer, just go ahead and click it when it finishes downloading. It's a pretty small file, so it shouldn't take very long. So we just click this to install it. And here's the installation. Now, this is why I want you to uninstall it and reinstall it. See down here, it says add Python 3.7 to path. This is unchecked by default. And this is very important. We want to make sure that this is checked so that Python gets added to our path. And what that means is, on a Windows computer at least, that you can run Python from anywhere on your computer. You don't have to be in the Python directory in order to run it. If we click this little box, that's so. We can run Python anywhere. But by default, for some reason, it's un unchecked, and it, it drives me crazy why that is, because you always want to add Python to pass. So make sure that's checked, and then come up here and just click uh, Install Now. And this doesn't take very long. And you'll notice it says 32-bit. Now, I'm on a 64-bit computer. Chances are you are too. Why are we downloading the 32-bit version? Why aren't we installing the 64-bit version? Well. The 32-bit version is the one you want. Uh, the 64-bit version is a little different, and there's some things in it that we don't really ever need or use but could cause problems. So just the standard default version is the 32-bit version. That's the correct version you want. That's the one everyone uses. So don't be like, oh, I've got a 64-bit computer. I need the 64-bit version of Python. No, you want the 32-bit. So, okay, setup was successful, and that's it. We are ready to go. It's just, uh, just that easy to install Python on Windows and uh, very cool. Okay, so we've downloaded and installed Python. Now we want to download and install the other two tools that we're going to need, the text editor and the git bash terminal. So head over to Google and just type in sublime text. And the first thing that pops up is sublimetext.com. Go ahead and click on this. And this is our text editor. It's completely free. Now you can absolutely feel free to use any text editor that you want. If you already have one that you like to use, Visual Studio Code or, um, I don't know, Notepad++, any real text editor at all, you can use that. Uh, I like Sublime Text. I've been using it for years. It's probably one of the most used text editors for coders, completely free, and it's available for Windows, Linux, or Mac. So whatever kind of computer you have, you'll see the download button for that kind of computer. And you'll notice it's Sublime Text 3, build 3207. If these numbers change by the time you watch this video, no big deal. Just download the latest one doesn't really matter what version it is. So go ahead and click this, download it for Windows, and you can save this anywhere. I'm just gonna save it to my desk, desktop, right? Now, you could save it, and when it finishes downloading, like I'm on Firefox, so it's downloading up here. If you're on Chrome, again, it'll be down there. Uh, click it when it finishes. Now, this is the installation. It's very simple. It's just one button, click Next, and then click Install. Now, I've already installed this on my computer, so I'm not gonna go through it again, but it'll just automatically install after you click this button and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna cancel out of this. Now to run Sublime Text, just click on your Windows Start menu, type in Sublime, and it'll pop up, kinda of looks like this. We'll get into all of this later on, uh, but that's all there is to it. Now, we also need a terminal, something to run our commands on. So I like the git bash terminal. Now if you're on Windows, Windows comes with a command terminal, a command prompt, it also comes with something called PowerShell, and you can use those, but they don't work as well, and you can actually have some problems with version control and stuff using those. So I just recommend 
that you use this git bash one. It's completely free. If you're on Linux or Mac, you already have a terminal, you can feel free to use that. Just go up to the little search function on your Mac or Linux, type in terminal, it'll pop right up. And most of the commands are gonna be the same. There's gonna be a couple that are different. Right at the beginning, I'll try and point those out when we get to them. But otherwise, it'll act the same as this one. In fact, that's one of the great things about this git bash terminal. It's a bash terminal, just like on Mac or Linux. So here we are, 2.23.0. And this is git-scm.com forward slash downloads, the site that we want. And notice there's a Mac or Linux version. So if you want to run this on Mac or Linux, you can absolutely download it to follow along if you like. Or like I said, just use the terminal that's already on your computer. So go ahead and download this. And this is a pretty slow website. It always takes a little while to download for some reason. Save this anywhere. I'm just, just going to save it to my desktop. And you can see it's... 45 megabytes or so. Now this should download instantaneously on a high-speed internet like I have and you probably have, but for some reason this website is always slow. It always takes a while to download, so whatever this has been, 15, 20 seconds or so. Drives me crazy, but what are you going to do? Okay, so once it's downloaded, go ahead and click on it and pull this over. Now this installation is a little bit weird, so I'm going to walk you through it. So there's the license, take that. And the and then we can click next again. Now, the very first thing it asks for is what text editor are you using? And we happen to be using Sublime Text, which is the default listed here. If you're using something else, you can come in here and click it if you want, but don't feel like you have to do it. And if your text editor isn't on this list, don't worry about it because this and our text editor do not work together in any way. So uh, there's some integration you can do, but we're not going to do that. So it's just sort of silly. I'm not even really sure why they asked that. So just go ahead and click Next. Leave it as it is. Even if you're not using Sublime, just leave it as Sublime. It really does not matter. So go ahead and click Next. And we're going to have a bunch of screens here, and we just want the defaults for all of them. So I'm just going to click Next, 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 Next. And we don't care what any of this stuff is. Just Next, Next. And then finally get to the Install button. Go ahead and click that and finish. I've already installed this on my computer, so I'm not going to do that. You can go ahead and do that. When it finishes installing, go to your Windows Start menu and type in git git, right, or git bash, and it should pop right up. When you click on it, uh, this is what it will look like. And in the next video, we'll talk about what this is and how to use it and all that good stuff. And uh, that's all there is to it. These are the tools we need. We don't need anything else. Uh, there's some things we'll have to download for Django, but we'll do them from the command terminal, from the prompt right here. So there's nothing like we have to go to a website and download and install from now on. We have all the tools that we need. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll jump in and start building out our project.